Well, there we have it, guys. New Zealand win the rugby championship, the Bledisloe game, and with a convincing scoreline, 38 points to 7. If you missed this one, you might be thinking, ah, oh, well, looks like New Zealand just, you know, took over this game and absolutely smashed it. To be honest, not really as much as I expected. The final scoreline looking incredibly flattering, uh, but was much closer for a long portion of this game than I expected it to be. The game is just finished, of course. We're going to go over the full-time reaction to this game, take us through some scores, some highlights, some fun stats, and all that good stuff. If you enjoy this content, make sure to subscribe to the channel and drop the video a like. Support the small rugby channels on YouTube because it really does help us out a lot. So New Zealand taking this win, uh, like I said, with that convincing scoreline. The first time they've won a rugby championship in a World Cup year since 2007, setting themselves up for potentially for another good year in a, in a World Cup year for them. Um, New Zealand getting themselves on the scoreboard straight away. Three minutes in, Frizzell getting over has had a fantastic tournament across the entire rugby championship. Not actually through New Zealand smashing their way through. It was actually an Australian line out on their own five metre line, passing the ball back to their scrum half. And Scott Barrett, who had another fantastic game today, absolutely clattering take McDermott as hard as he could in the in goal area dropping the ball and Frizzell jumping on it so getting a really early try on the board for New Zealand setting them up for this one Moenga did miss that kick and although New Zealand got themselves on the scoreboard first the next 20 minutes or so really there was a lot to talk about with Australia Australia got themselves on through Rob Valentini getting his try um, it looked like Corey Betty might have actually scored a try we went back after that one was a no try then we reverted back to an earlier potential score which Valentini did get looked ever so slightly like a double movement uh, you know I sort of allow that he, he, he reached out and got there it definitely looked like his whole body shifted with the ball though but the ref said it was absolutely fine so got that one and uh, Carter Gordon kicking that one over taking them to a 7.5 to lead um, with 8 minutes into the game now there's not a lot of scores to talk about all the way up till the end of that second half but certainly a lot of missed opportunities Carter Gordon missing a penalty that you know really you should be knocking over from uh, for an international standard uh, Mark Talia had a try disallowed which for me I thought was was pretty harsh to be fair the New Zealand on the big attack Australia managing to defend really well for most of this game to be fair they really defended their own five meter channel really really well defended through a number of phases I think they got to about 12 phases eventually the ball bobbled out the back Corey Betty offside got involved with the ball and just sort of flung it out massively offside don't know why he did it must have just been a split second reaction Wayne Barnes gives a, a penalty Mark Talia steps up takes a quick tap and go and gets himself over the try line and goes over um, and he got disallowed this one which was a, a bit of a, a newer rule to me that they had the tap and go the referees had a look at it and said that there wasn't a clear action of kicking the ball forwards and therefore it wasn't a tap and go I've never heard of that before um, as far as I was aware you had to just make contact with the boot and you went. They also said something about the ball has to have travelled a noticeable distance forward. I don't know how that works because most people's tap and go is just vertical to their own hands. So maybe they just mean has to travel a certain distance anyway. But we certainly see it on the five metre tap and goes from the forwards where they just literally nudge the ball with their toes and pick it up and run. They always seem fine. I'm not really sure why that was. So uh, Mark Talia had his try disallowed for that one uh, but Corey Betty for that earlier infringement also going off with his yellow card dropping Australia down to 14 men for this one and to be fair through most tier one international rugby there's a lot of talking about you know the referees necessarily don't penalize New Zealand you know as much as some of the other teams I've seen a lot of news articles about that today was actually one where I actually thought the ref was actually a little bit more harsh against New Zealand than, uh, than may be fair there were certainly a couple of issues um, that went New Zealand's way that was stopping their own attack I actually noted a couple down just from this first half alone we had Brody Retallick tackling a man at the ruck absolutely unnecessary absolutely a, a penalty for that one but just no need Mark Talia not releasing in uh, in one of his tackles which I thought was a little bit harsh myself I thought Cario Betty absolutely didn't release the tackle at all he just went from tackle straight into ripping the ball out of his hands Yuani falling on his own side of a ruck uh, shut down another attack for New Zealand which was really weird he wasn't even involved in it he just fell over and, and stopped the ball coming out so uh, didn't let his team recycle the ball and then that tap and go from Mark Talia. So four massive chances for tries in that first half for New Zealand, all of them getting squandered by their own actions. But I would say two out of those four, I thought were quite harsh by the uh, the refereeing staff today going against New Zealand. But an incredibly um, physical game. New Zealand obviously had, you know, ideas what they wanted to do. They've obviously identified that Nawakini Wase 
on that right wing. Although he's landing tackles, he does tend to lose meters um, in the tackles, no matter who he's tackling, really. And New Zealand absolutely exploited that today. They were always trying to shift out to their left wing, even if they were only a couple men back away from the touchline. They were always cutting back against the grain, sending men up, and they were making big meters. It'll be something Eddie Jones will want to work on um, towards the World Cup, be that wing, because now Nikita Wase is such a, a monster in attack. But defensively, uh, teams are beginning to identify. If you go through him, um, you will probably still make those meters and get closer to that uh, that try line. But a physical game, really, really tough up front. One of the issues for Australia today for me was just the fact that, again, that ball retention for them, New Zealand holding on to the ball for massive chunks of that game, Australia having to make so many tackles. I did find a little stat by the end of the game. Um, the actual number of tackles, Australia made 193 tackles compared to New Zealand's 117. So not quite double but, you know, near enough to double to be talking about. That's a lot of extra tackles to be making. It will tire your forwards out a lot. They had two yellow cards in this game, which just didn't help them. Um, but for massive portions of this game, Australia were defending their own five-metre line really well. But that physical game really did make an impact on the forward. And New Zealand absolutely made it known. We had the uh, Cody Taylor try. That was from a driving mall. That was, you know, after a number of physical actions that Australia had to try and stop. He eventually got over for that one. The Will Jordan try again. New Zealand on the offensive Australia defending well 19 phases of defending your own five meter line is an incredible task to ask of people especially at the end of a half when people are already knackered and you've been down a man through the Corey Betty yellow card eventually that defense narrowed up the ball spread out wide and Will Jordan getting over for his try to make it I think it's something like 23 tries in 23 games now he's just a monster in terms of uh, of scoring tries but a, a really good half from New Zealand in the opening one 19 points to seven at a uh, half time to them but the second half is where this one um, really got interesting 40 minutes to 60 minutes i would say that opening 20 of that second half all australia all of it australia they held on to the ball they were going through the phases making the ground forcing penalties out of new zealand the penalty count was massively in australia's way in the first half and then the second half it completely shifted up new zealand had to be on the defensive for a full 20 minutes in this game and defending really well but it's something that's plagued this australia team with eddie jones in charge just not converting these opportunities to points they had so many opportunities five meter driving malls not getting over the try line penalties close to the post not just taking three to try and close up the scoreboard players getting over the try line but held up New Zealand defended extremely well in this game Scott Barrett Frizzell and Ardi Sarvea were three that absolutely stood out Ardi Sarvea had one turnover penalty over his own try line absolutely fantastic from him um, New Zealand displaying a really nice sort of duality in this game of not only are they going to score six tries and absolutely smash the board um, but defensively they're going to be sound they're going to be able to hold up on their own line and for 20 minutes of defense in your own you know 22 and being on a constant attack really really impresses from them to um, to see that out and not actually concede any points at all uh, since the eighth minute in the game which is just a wild thing to talk about at uh, a tier one rugby after the 60th minute though or about the 59th minute because Caleb Clark got his try in the 59th minute um, unfortunately that avalanche came Eddie Jones decided to put on all of his subs in like the 50th minute he obviously tried to double down he obviously sort of identified what happened with the Springboks New Zealand game last week with the South African team being able to put on their subs you know 10 minutes into that second half and have them make a massive impact get over try and close that scoreboard up a bit um, Australia trying to do the same thing they put on six subs in that opening 10 minutes and made an impact but the New Zealand defence just didn't let them get over and score anything on that scoreboard. And after that 60th minute, you really felt like the wind had been taken out of their sails. They'd already lost Al Alatoa to a, uh, a nasty-looking injury, so I hope he recovers in time for the uh, the World Cup. And Tani Alatupo was uh, was carrying his own injury as well. So two tight head props um, in big issues today. And after you've made six of your eight subs and still can't get over the try line, um, it just becomes a bit of a mental battle. It's really hard then to keep the momentum going. And it just shifted completely completely um, towards New Zealand. And then just the cascade of tries from the New Zealand. After that 60 minute, Caleb Clark in the 59th, Mark Talia 65, um, Rico Iwani in that 67. They could have even had another one. Mark Talia got tackled uh, by Corio Betty. 
uh, right on the uh, on the wing. He could have passed back inside Iwani, potentially could have had a second try, all of which really well worked tries, just going through the back, spreading a tired defensive line incredibly thin and uh, and getting over for the try line. All three of them uh, absolutely fantastic tries. Taliano Tupo also having his, uh, his yellow card in the 58th minute. This one uh, was another weird one for me. Taliano Tupo actually went off sort of with an injury, but also a yellow card basically at the, uh, at the exact same time. Head contact tackle. Um, was mitigated down to a yellow. We got to see the bunker rule, which is fun. It's one of the new things coming into uh, into World Rugby now. Um, so he went off with his yellow card again, stressing this Australian team even further. I thought Angus Bell for for Australia played immensely today. What a, an ask of him to to play this full game. Um, and, and really stepping up, thought he had a, a really nice game. But one thing to take away from that yellow card, which I found really weird, again, in, in terms of the refereeing circles, there was a hit earlier on in the first half against Aaron Smith with Rob Valentini, which looked to be a direct shoulder to the face of Aaron Smith. Um, it was shown on the replays, the TMO clearly saw it, and uh, that was absolutely fine. Meanwhile, the Taliano Tupo try was a shoulder to the side of the head, and that was, you know, a yellow card, you know, mitigated because he was he was crouching down. Just a few consistency issues again in the world of, of international refereeing for me. Um, the commentators seem to think Wayne Barnes had a really good game. I thought there was big things missed on both sides of the board. I also think there was a number of penalties missed from players being in the side of the ruck. Nick White came on, saw him in at the side of the ruck and about three different rucks just diagonally straight into them. Um, I don't think he picked that one up at all either. And even with those issues, you know, that scoreboard is immensely dominant to uh, the New Zealand team who absolutely deserve this one today. Um, so fun starts to go over then at the end of the game. Um, possession 58 to 42 to New Zealand, you know, and talk about converting it. 58% possession, you get six tries compared to one. You know, that that's a really big, you know, show by them. Um, Territory is 46 to Australia, 54 to New Zealand. Time in opposition is 22. 3 minutes 52 for Australia, 9 minutes 57 for New Zealand, which is such a, a telling stat, you know, three times as long in your uh, opponent's team, which is actually quite surprising because 40 to 60 minutes was was entirely um feels like it was spent in the in the New Zealand half with Australia on the attack but a fantastic game by New Zealand they win the rugby championship and this Bledisloe game fantastic from them congratulations to New Zealand of course we have the Springboks versus Argentina game coming up this afternoon along with Scotland Italy there's also another fun one there's lots of rugby going on this afternoon guys so make sure you are subscribed to the channel to keep up to date with all the latest videos as they come out let me know what you thought of this one down in the comments section I'll see you all next time guys bye bye <laughs>